Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. We are now joined by Latasha Brown here in the studio. She is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter and has been organizing black women and others to vote all throughout the South. Latasha Brown, welcome to the studio of Roland Martin Unfiltered. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. All right, so let's get right to it. Fifty years ago, Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman in Congress. Now there are 25 black women in Congress. Of the five new black female members elected in 2018, none represent a majority black district. Four out of five represent suburban rather than urban districts. And we know that Stacey Abrams lost in Georgia's governor's race just by 55,000 votes in a state where her opponent did everything everything under the sun in order to steal that election. But a black woman won the race for attorney general in New York State, and Letitia James is making life miserable for Trump and investigating in his business and his foundations. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing with Black Voters Matter, Latasha, in order to break through voter suppression in the South. You know, I think one of the pieces, um, when we think about voting and we think about power, it's not just the participation. It's actually having a framework of how are you going to build political infrastructure mm -hmm. so that, that there is independent power. And normally what happens in terms of infrastructure, you either have political candidates yeah. that create the infrastructure or you have political parties, mm -hmm. not necessarily the people. And so our work has really been grounded in how do we get grassroots groups and organizations and the ecosystem, right, of black folks on the ground to have their own infrastructure so that politically that the power rests with them, not hoping that they'll pick the right candidate to do the right thing, but that in fact that you see a pipeline of candidates come out, you see accountability, and you see it beyond participation. And I often like to say that because I think we have to make this distinction that participation in itself does not necessarily just equate to power, Absolutely. right? And we know that even in the state of Mississippi, we know that black women in Mississippi have the highest voting turnout than anybody in the country, right? But when you look at some of the economic disparities and some of the other policy issues that they're facing, we recognize that participation is one part. It's a very, very key and important part, but it's one part. So uh, much of our work that we're doing at Black Voters Matter Fund is, one, providing some resources for grassroots groups on the ground, but also having a conversation around strategy, around power that is beyond participation. I love that. So <clears throat> when we think about black voter power lying in the hands of the voters rather than institutions, rather than any political party, what, can, what are you doing sort of in the off season? Because one of my frustrations yeah. is that uh, typically there is like a mad rush at the end to sort of mobilize the black vote instead of investing in these communities so that people can really will their power uh, year round, 365 days a year. So what are you doing right now with Black Voters Matter to ferment that so that our powers can strengthen for 2020, but also beyond 2020? You know, we created, created the organization specifically for that reason, that there was this very episodic, we call it um, bean counting, right. you know, round the beans up at the last minute, right? right? And that there wasn't an ongoing kind of strategic investment and strategy around how do you build power in communities. So there are a couple of things that we're doing in the offseason. One, I, it all boils down to who is organized, like getting people organized and helping to build the capacity of the organizations um, in a number of ways, from training to actually investment in those organizations to helping to build out those networks, to actually having a plan of action, a strategic coordinated plan um, for future elections. The other thing that I think oftentimes happens in this space is that we, there's this fallacy that the way that engagement happens is that people is the top of the ticket that's going to drive. We've seen actually the opposite. We actually did some data in Alabama where we looked at Lowndes County, which is a small black belt county, and in that county, what we saw was only 6,000 voters in that county. What we would see in, in, in consecutive gubernatorial elections, that from the primary to the governor's race, there was a drop off of 1,000 voters. That's a lot of voters wow. mm -hmm. in a county that only has 6,000 voters. But cool. essentially what winds up happening is the greatest opportunity to engage people is on the when there's a local election and a local race, mm -hmm. so that they would get engaged in a primary. So the idea of the power and people interest is the top of the ticket down. We see across the board that that's not necessarily in our community, but that it really is from the bottom up and local. And if you really think about it, 
If you're telling people, for, for pe when people lose control of their local school board, it's hard for them to get excited about the governor's election, right? Yeah. When they get lose control of their county commission, so often the power that is closest to them, that actually impacts their day-to-day -day life, yeah. that's where a lot of the energy is. And so what we've been doing is doing a strategy aligned with these communities on what races they think are important, right? So that we're supporting their infrastructure, we're supporting their strategies around that. I think the other thing we have to do, and I think we've been doing this as well, is really thinking about local governance mm -hmm. and self-governance. Yeah. What does it mean? It's one thing for us to respond to what's happening. It's another thing for us to have a conversation, one, about power, of, around shifting the dynamics of power, about even shifting the infrastructure so that it is more fair, um, it's more fair. With one of the groups that we've been working with in Knoxville, Tennessee, they're actually looking at, it's called the Knoxville, Tennessee, it's the Knoxville City Council Movement. They've actually been looking at the city council and running for, for, for seats so that they can actually take over the city council and restructure it in a way that is actually more responsive and accountable to the people. Mm. That's where we got to be thinking. Yeah. We've got to not just be responding to how do I get into your party, but we've got to set the table to our own party and really be able to do things that we're talking about local governance, what's our vision for community, and how do we see power in a way that really is rooted in an equity lens, an equity and racial justice lens. Absolutely. Any questions from the panel? I had one. How, what do you do to engage voters? Because one of the things that bothers me the most is not just that people skipped out on voting for a president this last election, but in conversations I have, I can't get them to understand you have no idea what's going on at the local level and how much that matters to you. So for you to say your vote doesn't matter because one politician is the same as the other on a national level is absurd when you think about the fact that you've got like 6,000 people and every single election in that city matters. Right. You know what's really interesting is um, I remember when I first started learning how to do um, organizing and someone would tell me they didn't vote because they didn't think it mattered and I would stand there until I would like turn purple mm -hmm. to try to convince mm -hmm. them how it mattered and one day there was a young man who said something around why he didn't think that voting mattered and it was so compelling that it actually I really I didn't have a comeback right and I had to sit back and I had to think about it and the and and I'm raising that because some of the frustration that our people are feeling right now is authentic yeah. and it is grounded and it's legitimate, right? Yeah. And so instead of running away from that, right, I think there's been a couple of approaches of getting people um, to vote. One, uh, oftentimes in our community, we use fear. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to come shut down. They're going to yeah. take this yeah. off. They're going to, at some point when people have just been bombarded with negative messages and negative images and fear, it, it, you can't. At some point, you got to cut that off, right? Mm -hmm. So we actually shifted the frame. We shifted the frame from fear to love and power yeah. and say that ultimately you have power That's that right. you can change your community. L we will actually talk them through that process. Um, a second thing that we do is when someone says, you know, I don't think that voting matters, right? We don't argue with them. We say, you know what? And I'll say this. I'll say, I understand because oftentimes I feel that way, mm -hmm. right? And so when you start from a place of having an authentic conversation with our people, you can actually engage them away because they know that you're coming to them real. And then so oftentimes, even in that space, I'll say, while I understand your frustration because I feel the same frustration, if someone is trying to break in my house and all I have is a hammer, and I, I might not have a gun, I might not have the, the tool that I want or the weapon that I want, but all I got a hammer, you need to be clear, I'm going to use that hammer yeah. to hit him in the head, right? <laughs> right? And so when you frame it that to understand and to really speak to recognizing there are limitations in the vote. It is, right? right. But when you are at war, when your community is at uh, under attack, you have to use everything that is available for you right, that you can actually do a pushback. And so we often tell people w voting is not the end all and the be all, right? But we are doing harm reduction, right? And yeah. we need you and we engage people in the conversation. The third thing I think that we do is, um, is that we actually use culture. We use music, we use food, we use a gathering, Excellent. and we listen. Yeah. Oftentimes folks don't like to listen to people in our community. Right. Folks don't come to our communities and listen to us. They come to our communities and tell us, how bad we are, how broke we are, how beat down things are, right? Our first 
point of contact, when we're going to communities, we literally have a listening session. We sit there and we listen. And when you start listening, people know that there's an authentic relationship developing. They can also start tapping into their own power. Mm -hmm. And it's a process. It's a process. But what we've seen is we've seen a great engagement. And this last year, we were in the uh, midterm election, we were able to engage 120 black-led organizations in the Deep South. That, so, so they're out there. People are out there and they want to do the work. Oftentimes, they don't have the resources or the tools. They need the support. S sometimes they don't know how to enter the process. Right. They need an entry port to enter the process, right? And then the third piece is oftentimes they need a frame. They need a frame of knowing what work or how can I make impact help me understand that. And so we've used those as our kind of on-wrap to get people engaged in the process. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 50 bucks each for the whole year, you can make this possible. Roland Martin Unfiltered.com.